Today we're going to start talking about uh, parallel and perpendicular lines, which we'll spend most of all the rest of the year working on in some form or fashion with a lot of different figures. We're starting with chapter 3. Yeah, we went to chapter 9, we're coming back to chapter 3. It's okay. Final of chapter 3 1, section 3 1 is parallel lines and transversals. There's some vocabulary we need to get a hold of before we go forward. Like always in geometry, there's some vocabulary. Got to have all the vocabulary words in order to make the sense out of this stuff. Number one is parallel lines. Now, most of you know what that is. Parallel lines, we're going to change that a little bit. Typically, you start right here and say lines that do not intersect or cross. We're going to change that a little bit today and say coplanar lines that do not intersect. Coplanar lines that do not intersect. Well, what does that look like? Well, coplanar means they're on the same flat surface. So they look sort of like that. Okay? Coplanar. They're on the same flat surface, like railroad tracks. Same flat surface, like on the surface of a desk, surface of a table, surface of a board. Next one we have is parallel planes. Planes are flat surfaces that do not intersect or parallel. For instance, in a box, the front and the back the top and the bottom, the left side and the right side, in this room, this wall and the back wall, the right wall and the left wall, the ceiling and the floor. Those would be considered parallel planes. They do not intersect. And we're going to introduce a new concept called skew lines. Skew lines are non-coplanar lines that do not intersect. What? Non-coplanar lines that do not intersect. Well, what do you mean? Well, parallel lines are coplanar lines. So let's take a look at this. Parallel lines are coplanar lines. They're on the same plane. Now, just as soon as we take one of those lines and take it off of it, the same plane, we get what's known as skew lines. Okay? Now, if you look at it like that, straight ahead, it looks like they cross. But they don't. Why? Because they're not on the same planes. They're on different planes. Non-coplanar lines that do not cross. I think probably the best example of this would be highways. Okay? Highway overpasses. For instance, down right here at College in 287. 287 goes on top. College goes on bottom. Okay? You don't have to stop. They don't cross like this. Oh, they look like they cross from the air, but you don't have to stop. Skew lines, okay? Now, some examples. We're going to use this, uh, you know, three-dimensional representation of a box. We have A, B, C, D is the front. E, F, G, H is the back. The dotted lines show us that we have some hidden lines back there. It's a shoe box. Front, back, right side, left side, top, bottom, Okay? Parallel lines. Let's identify some parallel lines. Line AE is parallel to DH. It's parallel to BF. It's also parallel to CG. All of those lines are parallel. They can be in the same plane and they do not intersect. Well, wait a minute. You say AE is not in the same plane as CG. Oh, yes, it is. Why? Because we can draw a plane that's a diagonal through there. Okay? They're parallel. We can put them in the same plane. Alright? Now, other lines that could be parallel. AB and DC. Yeah, top and bottom edge. AB can be parallel to EF. And AB can also be parallel to HG. Oh, no it can't. It's not on a, on a plane. Yes, it is. We can take a diagonal across there and cut it from the top edge to the back bottom edge and make that one plane. And so, therefore, they would be parallel in that one plane. Okay, parallel planes. Plane ABC, the front. EFG, the back. The front and the back are parallel. BFG. BFG, the right side. ADE, ADE, the left side. So, the front and the left are parallel. ABF, the top. ABF, CDG, CDG, the bottom they would be parallel planes, okay? Now, skew lines. 
What would be skew lines? Let's look at AD and CG. AD is over here in this plane. Okay? CG is over here. Those are two lines that will not intersect. Why? Because they're in two different planes. They look a little bit like this. Okay? Coming out lights you like that. Now, AB and CG. That's the one across here. One like this. Okay? Alright? EF and CG. Well, that's like this in the back. Alright? EF and DH. Well, that's the one over here. So those are skew lines. If I look at them like that, they look like they cross, but in reality they don't. Why? Because they're on two different planes. You need to get these down, particularly the difference between parallel and skew. Make sure you understand that, understand how to identify skew lines. Remember, they look like a highway intersection, an overpass and underpass. From the air, they look like they cross, but in actuality, no traffic has to stop because they don't cross. Talking about perpendicular and parallel lines, another thing we need to talk about is something known as a transversal. We need to identify what a transversal is so that we can use it, because we're going to use those quite a bit. Uh, my lines aren't very straight on the examples, but I think they'll work. A transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines in a plane at different points. Okay, so what does that mean? A line that intersects, it crosses two or more lines in the same plane, okay, the same flat surface. So we're all looking at the same flat surface at different points. In other words, they don't all cross at the same place. Now there's a couple places in Fort Worth where streets all cross at the same place. There's one at Seven Point down on the west side where you've got like seven different roads coming in. They have one intersection, one big light that takes forever to get through. They all cross at different places. Most of the time, your streets are not going to cross all at the same time. They're going to cross at different points. Just like all these lines cross each other at different points. So let's look at each one of these lines and let's treat each one as a transversal. A line that crosses other lines at different points. Let's take line J, the blue one. Now, what lines is it a transversal of? What lines does it cross at different points? Well, it crosses line L here. It crosses line L here. crosses line N there. So J is a transversal for lines L, M, and N. Let's look at line L. Line L is a transversal for line J. Line L crosses line J right there. Crosses line M right here. And crosses line N right there. So, line L is a transversal for line J, M, and N. Line M is a transversal for line J. Line M crosses J right here. Crosses L right here. And crosses N right there. Crosses each one of those lines at a different place. So, line M would be said to be the transversal of J, L, and N. Line N is a transversal for J, crosses right here. For line L, crosses right here. And for line M, crosses right there. So line N serves as a transversal for line J, L, and M. So each one of these lines can serve as a transversal for the other three. Now one of the things to remember about transversals is... Um, Lines go on forever. Okay? So if we were to come up with another line or mark it a little differently, just remember that you can draw that line on forever. So even though it doesn't look like it crosses, for instance, let's come in here and let's erase part of line L. Okay? Let's erase part of line L so it comes back to here. Let's redraw that so it looks like this right here. And it looks like this and call it L. Okay? Is L still a transversal for M? Yeah. Why? Because L keeps on going. Okay? L keeps on going. Even though we don't show it as crossing line M, 
it keeps on going and it will cross line M. Okay, so it's still a transversal for line M. Okay, transversal. A line that crosses two or more other lines in the same plane at different points creates its own intersection with each one of those lines and does not share an intersection with those lines. Once lines intersect, like a transversal crossing more than one line at different points on a plane, once lines intersect, well, lines intersecting lines create angles. And those angles have relationships. Transversals are no problem. Line L is a transversal to line J and K. Line L in red is a transversal to line J and K. What we're going to do is we're going to number these angles in a special way. Angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, angle 4, angle 5, angle 6, angle 7, and angle 8. And we're going to give those angles names and they have relationships. Now if you notice that we call these two sets of angles in here, we call them interior angles. Why? Because they're inside the two lines that the transversal crosses. So they're known as interior angles. 3, 4, 5, and 6 are interior angles. Well, if they're interior angles, then guess what the others are? They are exterior angles because they're outside of the two lines that the transversal line L crosses. And those exterior angles are lines 1 and 2 and 8 and 7. Okay? All right, now, how do we name these things? Corresponding angles, I'm just going to put them up here and let you look at them. Corresponding angles are angle 1, angle 5, angle 2, and angle 6, angle 4, and angle 8, angle 3, and angle 7. Now notice that corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal. One of them will be exterior, and one of them will be interior. Notice on this one, Angle 1 and angle 5 are both on the left side of the transversal. Angle 1 is an exterior angle. Angle 5 is an interior angle. Now, angle 2 and 6 are on the right side of the transversal. Angle 2 is exterior. Angle 6 is interior. Angle 4 and 8 are on the right and left side of the transversal. Left side of the transversal. Angle 4 is interior. Angle 8 is exterior. Angle 3 and angle 7, they're on the right side of the transversal. Angle 3 is interior, angle 7 is exterior. Okay? I like to call it different corner, different intersection, same corner. So if you have multiple streets, and I say, well, you know the intersection that so-and-so lives on? Well, that same corner, except on a different intersection. If that confuses you, well, you know what to do with it. Flush it. All right? So corresponding angles. Look at those pairs. Get to know those. Now we have another name. Alternate interiors. Notice alternate interiors 4 and 6. Notice that one of them will be on the left side of the transversal and the other will be on the right side. But they're both interior. One on one side and one on the other side. One up next to, next to one of the lines, one up next to the other line. 4 and 6 are alternate interior angles. 3 and 5 are alternate interior angles. Alternate exterior angles, same as alternate interior, except they're external. 1 and 7, alternate, opposite sides. Could call them opposite exterior. Alternate exterior, 1 and 7, and 2 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. Then we have same side interior angles. Same side interior, they're on the same side, and they're interior. 4 and 5 are same side interior angles. 3 and 6 are same side interior angles. We also have same side exterior angles. 1 and 8 are same side exterior. 2 and 7 are same side exterior. Now, you're going to see the name consecutive interior angles also. Same side interior and consecutive interior angles are the same thing. We refer to them in class in different both terms. You'll see them on test usually as consecutive interior. You need to put those two together and make sure you know that same side interior is the same thing as consecutive interior. Transversals create a set of angles. Here's what those angles are. You have interior angles, exterior angles, corresponding angles. Look at these pairs, identify them. Alternate, 
Alternate interior angles. Look at these pairs, know how to identify them. Alternate exterior, look at these pairs, the same thing all the way down. We'll be using those pairs of angles, we'll be making special relationships out of them with special types of lines and transversals.